Welcome to Brainstorm MTG. I'm ELD, and this is Fast Effect. We've got double speed vintage this time with commentary. This was filmed at Gaming Etc. in Acton in their monthly vintage event. And it looks like uh, John is actually on a storm list, the Paradoxical Outcomes Storm. Uh, in the past, he's played a bunch of Oath. And hopefully that header will get updated shortly. Uh, but he was, in fact, on a combo deck. Uh, really, it's a lot of fun to be able to play the most powerful cards in the format. Cards like the Mox's Ancestral, Time Walk, Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune. Uh, Paradoxical Outcome certainly has a place amongst those in terms of raw power. Uh, so both of us not actually sure what we're up against here. Only round uh, two or three of the tournament. And keeping on Bizarre Baghdad uh, certainly does a bit to mask your hand. Very often Dredge has to mull pretty deep in order to find the Bizarre. If your opponent is kind of aggressively mulliganing, that is not an unreasonable uh, thing to take into consideration with figuring out what they might be playing. And it looks like actually going to be Wheel of Fortune here. Uh, so two Moxes. This is going to be a very dangerous situation. The so Wheel of Fortune out of the gate against a blind opponent, usually a pretty safe play. However, uh, this is going to be potentially seven different dredges before I even get a turn. Uh, Tom being on the play, or John being on the play here, uh, really not doing him any favor. We've got Narcomoebas coming in. Think we'd imp being dredged. Nalgulgari Grave Troll. That's 22 cards dredged so far. All before getting a turn. Of course, this could all be undone uh, in a very anticlimactic fashion. Uh, if John does have, say, Lotus Time Twister, uh, but there's not a lot of cards that'll actually interact with graveyards in the main deck. Time Twister, really the most notable of them. There it is, a near perfect dredge setup in terms of the amount dredged. All four Grave Trolls, two Stinkweeds, only missing out on one card, and that's uh, because Golgari Thug needed to be chosen. Uh, there were no more Stinkweed Imps. So John dealing now with perfect information, a little late. Uh, but those two Narcomoebas are going to come in, and those are going to call to action all of those prized amalgams as well. Looks like just two. Which could be worse. Two Narcos and two prized amalgams certainly could be worse. Not a lot of cards left in the graveyard. Uh, but this one is almost certainly... Oh, but he does have Lotus. That is definitely the scariest card possible here. And it's being sacrificed for a Demonic Tutor. See what he has. For plays available, just one black mana floating. Add a Mox. Time walk could have been something. We see that on the bottom of the deck there. Uh, but he actually already used the Sapphire. Would have needed to have been like Mox Opal. And he's actually going to Vamp Tutor as well. So between those two tutors, looks like not actually able to stop... Oh, sorry about that. Just correcting the name. Not able to stop... The, the dredge side of things but can certainly set up a lethal for the next turn, so. See that Lotus perhaps would have been better off being used as a cantrip engine. Uh, looks like he does have some ponder type effects, ponder preordain. Uh, but Icarid coming back during the upkeep. Dredging hitting one more Narcomoeba. Gonna Cabal Therapy and see how many Bridge from Belows there are. 
Looks like all four bridges. So that should be able to convert into a win here. A dread return for Colgan. Possibly at 17, would Elish Norn be enough? Five, six, and five. Yes, Elish Norn would be enough. Uh, but the Colgan is the call. All of those zombies able to attack. And moving on to game two. John definitely could have used that information. Game one there, the Wheel of Fortune. Perhaps still worth baking. It really just sets up the risk-reward ratio uh, a bit differently. The, basically, your opponent is definitely going to have the nuts when you Wheel of Fortune. Uh, whereas, you know, normally when you play it, there's still a chance that they can draw into phenomenal cards. You're just really hoping that on your turn, you're going to be able to make the best use of them. Uh, but yeah, they definitely are going to have quite a board state uh, in a perfect setup uh, when Wheel of Fortune is getting fired off. Especially against a full hand. Getting rid of the bazaar, really not much of a silver lining there. This was filmed at Gaming Etc. with a mobile setup. Something trying to polish a little bit. Like being able to capture these events from uh, all the different shops that I go to. Uh, of course, I am at Scholars every Wednesday night for Vint uh, for Legacy. Uh, but And you see me there for almost all of their larger Vintage and Legacy events as well. Uh, but I do like to travel around and visit the other shops, especially when we're talking about ones that have really supported Vintage and Legacy for a long time, like Gaming Etc. has. What you'll find a lot of the time versus Dredge is players have a very difficult decision to make when they're gauging how good their hand is. Uh, it's very obvious when you've got a fistful of graveyard hate. Uh, that's generally going to be something you're excited about. Uh, but the hands where you're really carrying out your own plan and not disrupting Dredge can be really difficult to evaluate. Uh, there's just so many explosive Dredge hands uh, that can completely bury you even if you have your best draw. Uh, but then there's other times where Dredge really doesn't do that much to advance their game state on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. They just kind of grind you out. Uh, and in those games, perhaps you would have been able to combo out Dredge when they're just attacking for, you know, five or six damage a turn. Uh, so it's a very challenging deck to play against. I, I think that's something players should really be mindful of uh, when they're kind of looking at the format is, you know, there are some decks that are really different and attack from completely different axes like dredge uh, that can be really tough you know storm is in a similar boat uh, any of the, the paradoxical outcome lists or even dark petition storm you know those type of decks really put the test to your opponent when they're looking at the type of hands that they think are good enough with the different lines that they take you know doing things like you know hoping to live a turn sometimes absolutely the right strategy other times a completely naive decision and you'd be much better off taking a low percentage play uh, like using a bunch of cantrips to try and find time walk for example uh, compared to passing with a guaranteed victory on the following turn and just like you're just you're just not getting another turn there's just no way uh, so those type of decisions are definitely tough being able to win for sure the next turn in every other format's usually good enough uh, but this is a very explosive format with the world's most powerful cards. So, and here we have some of them. Talarian Academy with Mox Ruby and Lotus Petal. So four mana available to John here on the first turn. Not an exciting paradoxical outcome. Would only draw one card. Uh, let's see if he has any other artifacts that he can put down along with it. Two blue and a red. That could be Dak, though that's not typically in the list. Perhaps another artifact. Oh, and Tinker. That's a very good use of two blue and a red right there. And choosing to keep the Lotus Petal on board means that he very well may, may be getting 
a memory jar here. In fact, he is. Uh, this is an all-in play on the first turn. And this, again, is going to accelerate Dredge quite a bit. Now, if he had sacrificed the Lotus Petal and kept the Ruby, you'd kind of expect uh, that it would be getting the Blightsteel Colossus. But this is definitely going for the throat here. And he shows us Demonic Tutor, Gush, Force of Will. Those are a bunch of cards he's not going to be able to play. So that is it there. He has to discard the really going pedal to the metal during the draw step, able to dredge, hitting a Narcomoeba. And of course, this bazaar now is no longer setting up dredges. It is actually just dredging with that first activation. So this is a full time walk situation. Uh, what do you think about this line? Do you think it is worth it to go for the throat against Dredge, or do you think it would have been safer to pass the turn and activate Jar with an untap step? Could have actually had two artifacts in play and tapped his academy before sacrificing Jar. And Cabal Therapy... Ensuring that the way is clear. Looks like a Windfall. A very dangerous card to be casting. And Hollow One being cast. Having discarded three cards. And Prized Amalgams coming in. So a 10 damage clock put out there. Just two quick turns. All that John has for a window here. His deck certainly capable of making something happen in that window. But it's going to be with not a lot of cards, as Cabal Therapy, definitely a very real threat. That is a monster graveyard. Very few cards left. Oh, Gary Grave Troll being dredged. Got some bridge from below in the graveyard as well. And John just one turn here. Gonna need something amazing to start. And tendrils in a land, certainly not it. Uh, so that is the end of that match. Uh, John caught completely off guard there with the Wheel of Fortune. Uh, and perhaps too aggressive with the Memory Jar. Let me know what you think about that one. And we'll see you in the next video. You made it to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you want to help the channel, you can click like or subscribe, or you can check out some of our other videos covering Magic's most powerful formats. Thanks for watching.